Hey there, endurance athletes. I know you are driven, ambitious, and high performers as myself. So that is why I'm on a mission to share my story, my journey, and lessons learned with the elements of the holistic method, living life as a race too many years, and now I'm living life as a journey and training, fueling, performing my best in life for today, but also training my future self. So Here's my new mission to help you learn more and to follow my purpose. I'm adding these short-ish goals, 30 minutes podcasts on Thursdays, sometimes an extra one on Sundays. So if you want me to cover specific topics on the Low Carb Athlete podcast, audio and video, check out the YouTube channel, Low Carb Athlete, and you'll get instant upload of the current videos that I'm recording that week. The podcast audio version won't come out for like two to three months because I'm ahead of schedule. So I plan ahead and I'm already scheduling January podcast and it's still November. So just to follow the slides, what we're going to talk about today is focus on longevity and going through the last little bit, just summarizing the nutrition element of the holistic method for training and feeling and performing as a low carb athlete, the endurance athlete, just to recap, focus on longevity. So if you're watching the slides, you'll get a little more information. If you're a visual learner as myself, I put all my notes and articles and quotes into slides because my memory is not so great. And I like something to guide me to stay on track. So this is a picture of me on the left. This was actually in Kona Waikolo Lava Man this year. I turned 50 a year ago, November 5th is my birthday. And I have been changing how I train, how I fuel, and not blaming the aging process as I am perimenopausal. And as a female athlete, we really need to, well, as men too, avoid the loss of muscle strength as we age, agility, you know, balance and all that that we see in our parents and our grandparents. So what I've done the last two years or so is really focusing on adding in more protein and not as I went into more ketogenic diet, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, started eating real food and going more low carb, eating a lot more higher fats 10 years ago. Now I'm kind of switching and not because of the trends and the pendulum that swings back and forth in the nutrition world but based on research on focusing on longevity. And Dr. Gabrielle, she talks all about muscle is the organ of longevity. Focus on 20 to 40 grams of protein every three to four hours, hit my macro goals. That's going to be more important for where I'm in my life right now. So training and feeling yourself differently now at 50 than I did when I was 30. So you really not to you need to avoid doing what you did when you were 20, 30 year old versus 40, 50, 60 plus year old. So really look at getting a personalized program and figure out what's best for you. But just to summarize, Dr. Gabrielle talks about one gram of ideal body weight per pound of gram of protein. So if you are striving to be 150 pounds, that means 150 grams of protein a day break that up through the day. So if you've been like me doing one meal a day and one smaller meal, it's really difficult to hit that macro goal. And if you want to get lean and strong as you get older, well, lift heavy weights. We'll talk about today on the topic of exercise, but also eating protein. I cannot digest, simulate and help protein synthesis if I'm eating 150 grams of protein at once. So spreading out 50 grams three times a day or 20 grams, 30 grams, getting at least 100 grams a day is really essential if you are like me on a mission to look better as I age up. I don't want to be flabby and I'm trying to biohack this so-called menopause we'll go through. So it should be a smooth transition if you prepare for it, for those females listening. So nutrient-dense foods, we went over the end of the last uh, seminar I did on the holistic method nutrition concept of eating your foods are should they should be real foods, right? So nutrient dense foods. That's the ideal diet. Low carb Mediterranean, animal based, ketogenic, real food, 
carb timing, you know, getting real for sources of carbs, not zero carbs. So your carbs come from good quality sources as sweet potatoes, squash, you know, vegetables that are in season, crucifix vegetables, I find are good for liver health, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, but really listen to my podcast I did on, you know, carnivore great for us athletes, endurance athletes, and looking at why you should limit or avoid or at least properly prepare vegetables and other sources of phytates, lectins, and oxalates. So nutrition tips, I talked last time about Dr. Anna, we're going to do a, a follow-up podcast on menu pause, the six-day food plan variations and when to place those in your female hormone cycle. And then for athletes, when should we eat what type of plan? based on our training schedule, using a NutriSensor levels, tracking with Aura, Whoop, heart rate variability apps, really looking at that bio-individual needs of your feeling and training. So exercise and nutrition, we wanna look at together. So I like to look at your workout schedule and your nutrition and your biometrics. And then ideally functional lab testing, we need to look at to look at your microbiome, digestive processes, blood chemistry panel, hair mineral tests, all that. So nutrition hacks, just to review again, HVMN, Ketone IQ I've been playing with, uh, Vibrant Wellness, Vibrant Blue Oils, Parasympathetic Oils, amazing for vagal tone, HRV, bone broths, you know, bio-optimizers, they have all amazing supplements. So looking at hacks, but what about just free hacks, breathing exercises, hot cold therapy, you know, taking a walk outside and getting some fresh air taking your time to reset before you eat. So take three, breathe in, breathe out, pause and reset. So those are some hacks, apple cider vinegar, tons of benefits on that. So check that out. And then here we go. We get to the main topic today, exercise. So Goldilocks effect, what is the right amount of duration, intensity, type of exercise? So here's something, an infographic, the pyramid of physical activity. So I like the bottom, kind of what I've changed since my adrenal exhaustion 10 years ago almost started to be super serious, <laughs> uh, quality sleep and getting, you know, good quality seven to nine hours a night of sleep, resting, not being active, light tasks and chores, daily light physical activity, like walking, stretching, planking calls it strenuous or intense exercise two hours a week two times a week resistance training, Stacey Sims, Dr. Sims says four times a week and coordination exercises. So where's your endurance exercise in here? What is best for you, the endurance athlete? Well, you know, you're doing what you love to do. So that's great, but know that it's not necessary for your health. Continuous movement throughout the day, doing strength training and doing some short burst training is going to be more health promoting physical activity, strength training two to four times a week, hit training two times a week, three times a week. And then kind of that zone two, everyone was talking about math, tone, max aerobic function, heart rate. You're doing that. Maybe that's this chart says two hours a week, but that includes hit. So maybe four days a week you're doing. So that'd be two hours a week of hit or sorry, zone two. So that's kind of what a pyramid of physical activity would look like if you're not an endurance athlete. And if you had a choice, because we're limited in time, cardio versus strength training. So a few things, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon and Ben Bickman, Dr. Lyon says the organ of longevity, muscles, largest organ in the body, use it or lose it. Dr. Ben Bickman shares in his book, Why We Get Sick. Research shows that resistance training over cardio, which are both beneficial, but there's more benefit from resistance training if you're looking to improve insulin sensitivity. Those studies show that strength training improves muscle mass and cardio does not as much. Muscle is the largest destination for insulin stimulated glucose uptake. The more muscle, the large storage area for glucose in the blood and thus lowers the blood insulin. So they've said, I've said this a few times before on the show, but I think as your muscle as your suitcase and the bigger suitcase you can get, the more clothes you can pack in. So I like that analogy, glucose, get it in there. So I say, keep it simple, lift heavy things with good form, proper technique, 
and good alignment, learning how to engage your core, work those stabilizers, and really working on your foundation, building that base. So you're building that house, you wanna build the foundation, frame the house, and build the house on top of that, layers upon layers. That's what we wanna do with strength training. Don't just lift heavy things from the very beginning, as we say, three to six repetitions, heavy weights. You need to build that up. Just like you don't go keto right away, 50 grams a day. If you're trying to become fat adapted, you listen to my podcast. I did on what Dr. Dan Plews talks about different phases that we're just starting phase one, looking at what we're eating, kind of being observant. Phase two, we're swapping out processed foods for real food and then we go into phase three that we're working on a two to three week low carb food pyramid time or food pyramid food time that we're keeping the carbs about 50 grams a day. And then we're going to move into finding your sweet spot is the next phase that could be hundred or more grams of carbohydrate for the metabolically fit fat adapted athlete. So same strength training. I don't want you to just go lift three reps of your heaviest weight. Let's work first on shoulder stability, core muscles, stabilizers, rotator cuff, hip mobility. And we work from there. Maybe starting with the body weight exercises as push-ups, squats, and planks. And then we add on. So same with cardio. Yeah, you should do sprint training all out. But what if you haven't done anything? What's the safest? Well, maybe sitting on a stationary bike, riding five minutes, and then just spinning really fast for 20 seconds and then slowing down and then doing it again. So really work with a coach that can help guide you so you don't injure yourself. And a lot of people I know during COVID, when they couldn't get to the gym, they were trying these workouts online. And I know a lot of people that continue to hurt themselves because they're doing a heavy kettlebell workout that's very technique based. So basically going back to some of this page is cardio versus strength training. If you have the choice, do strength training and then add a little cardio blast at the finish. So functional primal strength training, we talk about key parts of a workout within that strength. So you want a pull, you want a push, you want to squat, a lunge, a bend, working on your gait, and then rotation, twisting. So you can pick exercises if you only have time. Well, you can make time. You can do a 15 minute workout four days a week, or you can do two days a week, go a little bit longer. But I think doing a little bit of something each day, if you alternate a push pull next day, do a squat lunge, like deadlifts and squats and lunges. And then the next day you're doing a little bit more core and more functional movements with some medicine ball twists, stuff like that. And then where you fit in your hit training finisher is based on, are you recovered? How's your HRV? How was your workout and sleep the day before? How do you feel? And looking at the biometrics as with aura score and your training peaks. Okay, so best time of day. I've spoken about this before, but basically best time of day exercise is when you're gonna do it. When are you gonna be consistent? So we know that we've talked about what Ben Greenfield has taught us and the circadian rhythm calendar or schedule we look at three to five in the afternoon when your body is more primed. I like to wake up and go work out, but that workout is more my heart rate workout, endurance workout. I like to get outside and then strength training for me can be in the morning or I go in the evening because I work all day and then I swim at lunchtime a few days a week. So strength training, ideally when I will be more alert and be able to have more energy and quickness. For me, it's probably, as I say in this chart, about three o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock. If I work out later, I'm tired because I go to bed early and I'll disrupt my sleep. But when are you able to fit it in your schedule based on your family life, your work life? When are you consistent? When you have access to leave, maybe you have, you know, parent that you have to have someone home with your kids, something like that. So you got to figure out what works for you. So don't make it complicated. Pick what exercises make you happy. What do you enjoy to do? Do you want like to work out alone or do you need to be in a group and do a class? Do you need to follow a video? Do you feel okay going out for your exercise outside by yourself and then 
push yourself hard enough when it's intervals. So like I just joined San Diego Tri Club and I joined San Diego Track and Field Club to do speed workout on Tuesdays when I heal these injuries in my hip joints and left side that's not working. I do better push myself as I would think most people do in a group. So depends on the person. So longevity tips, as I said on that chart in the beginning, endurance exercise training for Ironman wasn't on there. <laughs> Go figure, but walking outside, fasted morning walk outside, that's your heart rate's down, just getting fresh air, getting your eyes exposed to the sunlight, I think is really important. Also, you know, finishing that morning ritual with a shower with hot, cold intervals, or if you do cold plunge, I do not, but, you know, ending a cold burst of cold water, end of a shower helps me. If you have a sauna, and a cold tub, that's awesome, to, you know, to rotate those. So that's great for longevity. So if you're looking for performance gains, you're training for a race, it's going to be different than if you're looking at longevity. That's why I continue to say, you know, take care of the whole you now, but also train for your future self. So we're not increasing the oxidative stress. We're mixing up things, especially off season. Hopefully you are. All right. Are you taking essential amino acids? If you listen back to a podcast I did earlier this year with Angelo Keeley of Keon, has researched a ton on essential amino acids versus branch chain amino acids. So I've taken Keon, I've taken Hammer Nutrition, but they're branch chain amino acids and Keon. I take their capsules for the essential amino acids. I have the different drinks, but Sadly, right now I can't do stevia and the liquid aminos have stevia in them as every product lately has stevia, but it helps your amino acids help your sleep. Tryptophan converts into melatonin, helping improve your sleep. So improving sleep quality has been shown, as you know, we'll talk about sleep another time, but athletic performance and also lower self-reported levels of depression, which I find a lot of my clients struggle with depression. It's not the minors anymore. A lot of people battle with depression the last few years. So taking at least 30, uh, 30 grams, 20 grams of essential amino acids after your workout, but before workout five to 10 grams, but taking essential amino acids before bed helps with sleep recovery on your post-workout sessions. You can do to help reduce fatigue and improve the speed of recovery and then muscle maintenance, essential aminos help stimulate anabolic state. And that is what I'm on a mission for to help balance building versus breaking down of my muscles. All right, the quick topic, fasted exercise. So keto con, I was trying to talk a little bit about this. What I do find if you go back to January, 2022, I talked to Keto Gains, Aunt Luis, and I talked to Rob Wolf. and this kind of started the year talking about these fasted exercise. Now, no calories beforehand if you're doing a low heart rate, just nature, walk, easy exercise. Strong black coffee you can do is fasted. But once you add any calories in your coffee, that's not truly fasted. But will that uh, take you out of fat burning? Is that appropriate? You know, what type of workout are you doing? Is it going to be high heart rate that you're burning carbohydrates or are you staying in a low heart rate, max aerobic function, math training zone? So you kind of decide if you need to eat or not. And then females, we might benefit and perform better if we have a little bit of calories. So I like to do that in my coffee. So Keto Gains, their pre-workout coffee for lifting weights is 25 to 30 grams of a low carb whey protein. And then they add five to 15 grams of MCT oil or powder. And I just ordered a big bag from Bubs Collagen and Bubs MCT oil powder. Also Laird's creamer I use that has MCT oil in it and mushroom adaptogens. So I've been adding that actually more daily in my coffee before workout. Now I've been adding collagen in my coffee. And so I ordered more bubs. So if I'm doing a workout that's a little longer, maybe some intervals, doing strength training, I'll add a little bit more of this stuff in my coffee. And it depends on the time of day of my workout. If it's first thing in the morning, I might just do a few sips of coffee. If it's a little bit later in the morning, like at nine in the morning, it might be I need something else. 
Also adding three to five grams of creatine. Uh, you know, I get this from Keon. Cynthia Thurlow is just coming out with a new one. And there's, I know Mike Mutzel has a, somebody has a low carb whey protein powder with creatine in it and aminos with creatine. There's a lot of combos that you can buy. So if you're doing a targeted keto diet, you can add five to 15 grams dextrose to glucose into this coffee drink if you're doing a harder workout. So you can check out this infographic from Keto Gains. Their pre-workout coffee got pretty popular over the last few years. They also add sodium. So you can experiment adding Himalayan sea salt. Or I bought a 10 pound bag. I think it's 10 pounds, huge bag of Redmond sea salt. And then you mix everything you need. And then you take that 20 to 30 minutes before your strength training workout. Now that strength training, doing more glycolytic depleting workout versus a low heart rate workout. So the fueling source before a workout depends if you're a man or a woman, first thing in the morning, what you ate the night before, what time you ate, maybe like you ate your last meal was at three o'clock in the afternoon, making sure you're doing a 12 hour fast to 15 hour max for most athletes. Females, we need to do less, longer fasts if we're doing exercise. So Females, again, as I said, many times need a little bit of calories before they work out. So something like this with just even the MCT oil and collagen, I think would be a good experiment. Remember, N equals one. So let's summarize fasted exercise guidelines for athletes. This will continue on on this show, but men can fast 12 to 16 hours. Premenstrual menopausal female can do 12 to 15 hours, but they are more sensitive to the hormone kisspeptin. So if the hormone kisspeptin is disrupted, sex hormones are not produced as they should be. If the brain perceives deficiency in nutrients, especially carbohydrates, this marks a reduction in kisspeptin. So kisspeptin is not stimulated and this can increase appetite and reduce sensitivity to insulin, which is insulin insensitivity, insulin resistance. And some research shows that intermittent fasting may cause impaired glucose intolerance in women, but not men. So this is why women, us female athletes that are driven, ambitious, high performers need to look at the guidelines differently based on the research is based on more male athletes and depends on their age. They don't have a hormone cycle like we do that changes pretty much every two weeks. Um, so we need to adjust the guidelines. So men, 12, 16 hours, fasted exercise, they're pretty good by just eating a little more carbs in their evening meal. Women, we might be better adding a little MCT oil, Laird's creamer with some coconut sugar and coconut MCTs in there and some maybe collagen peptides. So experiment. All right, sleep. I just want to touch on this. Stress hormones. Here's your circadian rhythm. We should have alert in the morning. That's why we want to see the sunrise. We want to wake up energetic. Our cortisol should be up naturally. Not too high, not too low. So go back to the Goldilocks effect. What's the right amount? We don't want cortisol being too high or too low in the morning. And then it should kind of go down. Melatonin is a white line here. It should go up, say after sunset. Cortisol should come down. When I run a Dutch hormone lab, test on people. We see how is their hormone. It's, we're taking a dried urine test or urine test and then dry it. So then it's dried urine test five times in a 24 hour period that we get to see what their cycle looks like here. Is it optimal in our range? Is it above or below? So sleeping, we should have that psychological repair between two and six. Physical repair is say like 11 to two a.m. 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. is that physiological repair. So if you are one staying up so late, not prioritizing your sleep, you are going to be more at risk for some imbalances, not getting your body to rest and repair and detoxification. So another chart here on the slideshow, what happens? As I said earlier, what time, best time of day to work out, 2.30 in the afternoon, approximately is best coordination, fastest reaction time at 3.30 in the afternoon and 5 p.m. greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength. 
which for me isn't, I don't feel like I'm best working out in the morning and nighttime I'm tired. So this is circadian rhythm of a, a morning lark <laughs> for me. Uh, not so much. So deepest sleep is around 2 a.m., lowest body temperature, 4.30 a.m. So kind of look at this as just not everyone's the same, but somewhat similar. My aura ring score will tell you differently. My deep sleep is the first half of the night, not as much the second half of the night. My lowest heart rate, yeah, it's around 3 or 4 in the morning, right before I wake up. My heart rate can be 40, and my HRV goes and peaks I don't know what time HRV, but I can see my highest point more second half of the night. So it's interesting to look at your sleep, testing and not guessing, as I said. Aura Ring can tell you how did you sleep, your sleep balance over time, you know, the past two weeks, or for females looking at the follicular phase versus their luteal phase, because those scores are going to be different. Looking at your activity balance, your resting heart rate, as I said, when it's higher, you know, what's going on. So you need to know your baseline, your HRV. If it's off, you're from your baseline, what's going on. Again, women's HRV is going to be better, higher. Follicular phase, luteal phase, your HRV will come down. Your body's more sympathetic dominance in your luteal phase, as well as your resting heart rate will be higher than your follicular phase and body temperature will be up. So women, your follicular luteal phase is very different. So men will kind of be more consistent. So why we need our deep sleep, uh, this is why I prioritize my sleep and no one messes with me. I don't go out during the week late at night. I don't like being out Sunday nights. <laughs> so if you want to be social with me, Saturday night, I'm good. Friday night, good, but like 8 p.m., I'm yawning. So uh, if you're like me, we're up early exercising and enjoying the day. And by nighttime, I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> so... I think it's important to look at your sleep cycle, promoting muscle growth and repair, blood flow, increased muscles, your growth hormones released, your tissue growth and cell repair occurs, brain flushes waste and shows long, slow brain waves. Waking up is more difficult and is you're more disoriented if groggy, if awoken during your deep sleep schedule. So deep sleep is stage three and four, and you can check that out in your aura or whoop. Now, I've talked to Dr. Uh, Stephen Bruce years ago, a couple of years ago, and you might have heard this other shows. He's the sleep doctor, and he's created the four chronotypes, lion, bear, wolf, and dolphin. So you can do a little quiz, to find out what is your chronotype, and then best time of day, do everything. I'm a lion. I'm an early riser, so I fit in, <laughs> excuse me, with the early risers of the world are a lion, optimistic naturally disciplined, natural tendency for routine and moderation in their daily habits, lower risk for cardiovascular disease, obesity, mental health, and start the day full of energy in the morning and early in the afternoon, most productive, 15 to 20% of the population are lions. So check out what you are. It's kind of fun to know. And then you can figure out the best time of day. The Power of When is a great book to look over in their guidelines. So tips to sleep better. Well, I was saying earlier, avoiding intense exercise in the evening, avoid eating after dinner. So if you're in bed by 10, I have my clients say seven o'clock, three hours, stop eating for dinner it would be seven. So the kitchen's closed off limits, no eating, no snacking. You know, if you you ate, if you ate really early, like some days I eat at two or three o'clock and I'm full the rest of the night, but maybe I need a little something before bed. So I'm experimenting if my sleep is better, if I have a little bit of calories, if it's little spoonful of nut butter, or you, know, you can try a little coconut oil or have, um, I don't know, what do I eat? Some berries might help for some people or a little tea, sleepy time tea that has some sweetener in it. But I also write in a journal. I create a cold, dark room. I have a little wind down routine that I, I wash my face, do mask, do scrub, I get into bed and I write my journal, three things I'm grateful for and set intentions, what I want to manifest for the next day. I have the room super cold. I like fresh air. So I have the fan on. And if it's wintertime, having the window a little open, I like being cold room and being all cozy in bed. I have a weighted blanket. I really would like to have a chili pad someday. I think that'd be kind of fun to see how that helps my sleep. I also put a sleepy face mask on. So 
I have a mask on that's padded and doesn't indent my eyes. So that is something that I found really helps because it's light in our bedroom with the night lights, city lights through our window because we're on top of a hill. So we can have some bright lights from the buildings below us. And I think it's how you start your day. Really, how you start your day and in your day is important to optimizing your sleep. So think about what are some things you can do tonight, today, this morning to optimize your sleep. Getting outside first thing in the morning, getting the fresh air and your eyes exposed to that morning sunrise is really helpful. And I could go on. This is a whole show in itself, but you can see the infographics pictures on the side, but using the Biomat, Norma Tech, not using your computer in bed disconnecting, unplugging devices. Like after seven o'clock, I turn off everything. When I go read in bed, I turn off my phone, put an airplane mode, put it downstairs, you know, say goodnight, I'm, I'm out. So I'm gonna go read in bed, That's, there's no electronic devices. Okay, so a couple things and then I'll wrap up. Glucose and fat loss, so restorative sleep might also lower unhealthy blood sugar levels by promoting healthy systems. Decreased sleep is a risk factor for increased blood sugar levels. Partial sleep deprivation over one night, one night can increase insulin resistance, which means increase blood sugar levels. Lack of sleep has been associated with diabetes, a blood sugar disorder, as you know. So really, if you're struggling, as I help clients, I say, are you struggling doing all the right things and you cannot get their desired results? So maybe you're trying to lose weight, you're improving health issues, have odd symptoms, your performance and your workouts is horrible, you're not recovering. Well, it might not just be nutrition, there's so much more. So look at the eight elements holistic method are there for a reason based on my own experience working with clients, working as an athlete myself and my own trainings and experiences. The infographic here I just want to touch on, Chinese medicine I find is fascinating. This is the clock in Chinese medicine, what happens. So I looked this up years ago. If you look up what happens at 2 a.m., and 4 a.m. So liver time in Chinese medicine is 2 a.m. How many people wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning, can't fall back asleep? Full moon. When you're stressed out, when you are doing, when you need a detox. So often liver activity at night, parasites, pathogens, liver detoxifications going on. You might have more issues, blood sugar, all sorts of things related to the liver. So interesting to see what happens each hour of the day in Chinese medicine. So stress management is a big topic. We'll do next time talking about eustress versus distress, the Goldilocks locks effect for stress, too hot, too cold, just right. And what is hormesis, acute stress, and the dose is a poison. So this will be our next episode of the eight elements of the holistic method. This was on number two exercise with a little recap of nutrition and then touching on sleep. So let me know if you want more information. This is all in slides on my website, debbiepotts.net. So if you want to learn more about the holistic method, about training and feeling low carb athlete, about fasted exercise, about the Goldilocks rule, all of that are multiple books on my website for free. I don't send out emails all the time. It's like a few times a year. <laughs> so don't worry about more emails into your inbox. Just want you to be healthy, fit and healthy from the inside out. So hopefully that helps you today. I will talk to you next time. Thanks for listening and enjoying the show. I hope if not, leave me some suggestions and feedback how I can help you.